everybody welcome back to my channel wild like a flower gardening my name is Sarah and I'm putting together a little show and tell video for you all um, for those of you that follow me on Instagram you may already know that I have been running an Etsy store all winter long making stickers and decals and shirts and stuff um, so you may be kind of familiar with what I've been doing but I haven't really sat down and put together a video to talk about it or share it on my YouTube so this is going to be kind of a fun show and tell um, and explaining what this process has been like for me so if you're excited to look at all these cool little fun things um, and hear about what running an Etsy store and using a Cricut and stuff is like stay tuned because this is gonna be cute so thank you so much for joining me um, I'm excited to talk about this because I have been on such a journey as an adult to learn new skills um, has been so enriching. I feel inspired and really proud of myself uh, because growing up I was never encouraged to be artistic. I was never very good at doing anything artistic. I got C's in my art class which we could debate all day long about grading art class um, and it was just super defeating for me and as I you know went into adulthood I never pursued anything artistic or really crafty like ever. Ever. Um, so this is a big deal for me, like just in general. And so I, I started this journey because I use Procreate to do my garden designs. If you follow me from last year, I started doing native plant garden designs. Why do I use Procreate? It's a drawing app. Well, I don't have a desktop. I only have an iPad. And your options in Procreate are limitless. And I can draw on my iPad. You know, so that's where I got started. My drawings at the very beginning for garden design were so, so bad. I'll put one up for like just a second. Oh, so bad. Um, but I knew while I was making them so bad that it was just a matter of me learning the app and I would eventually make stuff more like this. That I'm like, yeah, that shows you, a, you kind of know what plants those are. It gives you a more well-rounded idea of the concept. Um, and I've made some other fun things um, that have been more on the creative side that I now, you know, I, I would have never dreamed to be where I am with my stickers and my drawing abilities. Um, I started drawing with um, doing caterpillars because they're fairly simple, if you will. Um, I did my very first drawing was a eastern black swallowtail caterpillar. Right? We love this. I got a picture from uh, Black Swallowtail Mama Maribel from her garden. Uh, Maribel has provided me with countless amazing photos to do my, uh, my drawings on. Um, and I like doing pictures that I've taken or my friends have taken because I feel like it just makes it like more personal to me. Um, and it's like putting a memory just into something that, you know, I can keep with me forever you know so I start with these now this is something that I ordered recently through sticker mule if you want a quick blip on stickers your options are you can order them online um, I started ordering through sticker app first um, so most of my stickers are shiny this is a tomato hornworm that I made this new one from sticker mule is a little smaller it was their sample pack and it's more matte. I like both. Um, I may do more matte in the future, but right now all my inventory is mostly shiny other than these. So I did a tomato hornworm sticker as well. Why? Well, everyone considers tomato hornworms to be a pest, but I think it's important to remember that they are also a native pollinator, like a native moth species. Um, so even though I'm not saying they don't act like a pest, because um, they definitely do, this is a picture I took of a tomato hornworm that happened to be on my tomato plant um, when I was doing container gardening in 2020. Um, so yeah, they can definitely be a pest, but I also just wanted to put something you know, into like a sticker form because it celebrates them and it's a reminder that this is not always a species that um, needs to be looked at in a negative way, you know? So I thought, you know, why not? Some people have looked at me like I'm nuts um, for making a tomato one worm sticker, but I don't care. I also did a spice bush swallowtail. I don't love how this one came out, but it's not too bad. You can see on the backs of some of these, I have some stuff printed, um, the species name and their host plants and my social media. I don't print on the back of my stickers anymore. This was like an extra 11 or $12 per batch. So I did that at first because I wanted materials that if I gave them away, you could follow up with my social media. Um, but now I don't do that because um, I'll just give a business sticker or a business card. Um, and I've learned that now that I make stickers at home, I can make labels to put on the back of them and it's all the same. 
So this is a Cecropia moth caterpillar. This is, I was getting a little better at drawing, better at finer details, so I tried something a little bit more wacky, um, and I'm really, really proud of how this one came out. Um, this one's one of my favorites. I went on to do um, a hickory horn devil, but I'm really conflicted on the color because um, I see them turquoise and green online, and I couldn't get a straight answer out of anything that was like telling me, you know, what color I should really be making the sticker. Um, so if you think I should make this more green, let me know down in the comments. I will not be offended. My feelings will not be hurt. I'm searching for the answer anyways. Please just tell me. The stickers that I was making that I was ordering online, I had to order them because I had no way to cut them out at home, right? Um, and so around Christmas, I got a Cricut. Um, crickets are so fun. Crickets are like crack. Um, you can do whatever you want with them. So I started making some really simple things. Um, I downloaded a bunch of different fonts, and I really like the Native Plant Nerd little decal that it came out with. So the Cricut can cut different materials. Um, one of the materials is an iron-on vinyl, so that's how I make the shirts and sweaters. I really like it. I put on a bunch of pastels, but now I have a bunch of different shirt colors on my Etsy. I've learned I want to do less shirts. I might make the iron-on decals available later. Um, I don't right now because I don't want any confusion between an iron-on and a sticker decal. Um, but I'm moving away from shirts in the future. If you're interested in a shirt or a sweater, check my Etsy out now. It is April of 2022, so I can't promise if you come across this video like by the fall that I'll have any shirts and sweaters on my shop because it's frustrating. It's a lot of work, a lot of pressure. I've messed up shirts a bunch of times and had to redo them, so I just, I want to move away from it. I don't love it. I did go crazy with Native Plant Nerd decals. Now, decal is what I use to describe the vinyl sticker, but it's different from a printed sticker, if that makes sense. Just so you're familiar with kind of some of the language. There's really fun, like holographic material. I got packs of different colors, so I offer it in a ton of colors on my Etsy shop right now. Um, if you don't see a color that you might like, just message the shop because I have a lot of um, different ones from different packs that I've purchased that I haven't even made decals for. I've got options that I don't even have listed because I just have so many. Um, but I really like it. This decal has been my most popular. I made a couple others, um, but I have put more energy into this one because it has been everyone's favorite. Um, it's personally like my favorite. I love it. It is exactly what I wanted in my head to just convey that I personally am a native plant nerd. Language right now is really important around things because you know when you hear save the bees you think honeybee, when you think plant nerd you think house plants. So I want you know things that are specific to native plants to help us who are native plant nerds celebrate them but to also provide language and products that articulate to other people that there's more to being a plant nerd like and that there are plants out there that aren't just house plants or veggie plants or non-native plants like there are native plants out here that deserve you to be nerdy about you know yeah like i said it is the month of april and to celebrate april being native plant month i made some april's native plant month decals um, i'm including some of these decals and some stickers that i made free with every purchase that happens throughout the month of april of 22 um, so if you are interested in placing an order and you want some of the april's native plant month swag order in april um, because i can't promise i'll offer it in may yeah those are fun. Um, if you're not sure what Native Plant Month is, by the way, I have a video from last year that talks about it. Feel free to check it out. Um, essentially, Native Plant Month last year was um, something that Ohio did, and this year it's gone national, so I really wanted some stuff in my Etsy store to really help us celebrate that. I am also running a promo code for 35% off in my Etsy store. I will put that link in the description below. That code goes away, though, once we hit May. Because I've gone nuts. Um, I made, I really like, um, I really like my Save the Native Bees sticker. You guys on Instagram have probably definitely seen this. Um, I love this. Again, wanting that language to be specific so people understand that there's more to just save the bees, right? And it really makes people think and kind of um, gains a little bit more attention, I think. So I really wanted for a while to try holographic paper. So I also make some holographic versions of just a couple of my stickers that I make at home now that I have this Cricut. Um, I did learn holographic paper is really hard to use. I don't like it. Um, I offer it for a few things, but I'm going to be moving away from holographic paper unless I find a solution. So right now I have to make 
the sticker on the white paper first and then I have to cut out the outline for it that the Cricut reads and I have to tape that outline over top of the holographic one and hope to goodness that it cuts it accurately and then it doesn't get bunched up under the Cricut and ruin everything. Yeah, Lots of materials have been wasted trying to try holographic paper so for those of you who are interested in holographic paper please like research troubleshooting holographic paper before you try because you are likely not going to be able to just like run it through like normal. Um, I love it, it's pretty, I wanna do it. Maybe holographic paper is something that I order in the future through Sticker App or Sticker Mule um, and then get them to do it for me because this was made by Sticker App, by the way. Um, I didn't make this one at home, I wanted, this one of my favorite stickers, one of my best sellers. So this was something that I had them make for me. The difference in quality between um, stickers that I order and stickers that I make at home this is completely waterproof. I could put this on my car and have no problems. I have stickers from last year on my car that are from Sticker App. They look brand new. Um, the stickers that I make, I put one on my car to try it. Winter, snow, rain, the sticker is kind of bleeding. You can still read it. It's still very clear. It's one of these um, when I was making them at home. And it, like it's, I'm looking at it right now at the window. I can still read it, see it. But when you get closer, you can see that some of the ink is bleeding. So on my Etsy, you will see that I write not waterproof. To, alongside most of the stickers that I make myself at home because um, they are great on all kinds of surfaces. I just don't want anyone to put it on an outside surface and be surprised if over time, you know, the ink starts to bleed or be affected by water. But any of my stickers that say they are waterproof, I order them in bulk and they are completely safe to be putting on outside surfaces. So love that about ordering online. I try to get my best sellers online so that way, one, I don't have to keep making them all the time and two, they're my, my highest quality stickers. So I started out with some easy stuff, right? You know, a bumblebee, some caterpillars, I did some salamanders, I did some cicadas, you know, these guys right here, super cute, you know, not easy, but easier than like some more complex kinds of drawings. Um, and then I started wanting to draw some flowers because who would I be if I didn't do flowers, right? Um, so my first flower that I started to do, I did a golden rod which I really love how it turned out. This is a bestseller. I ordered this from Sticker App, so it's waterproof and I have a bunch of these. Then I kind of ventured on, I did some um, gray-headed cone flowers. This is another sticker mule. You can see it's more matte and it's a little smaller because their sample sizes uh, wouldn't let me do a four inch sticker. Most of my flowers are four inches. This guy is three, um, but I still love it, super cute. Some of my stickers that I make at home, I did a Spring Beauty. I love this one. As my art skills are getting better, this is one I want to come back to and see if I can do it better later. I did some evening primrose. I did a New England Aster. Love the purple yellow contrast there. Um, one of my best sellers is this Trillium. This one's ordered through Sticker App. Super cute, everyone really loves it. This is something I'd like to come back to as well in the future. My drawings of flowers, they're really basic still and I haven't put a lot of energy into drawing them better. Um, I do really want to though, moving forward, start redrawing my flowers now that I've gotten a lot better at art um, and I wanna see if maybe I can do them in a different style that I like more. I did try a different style with a couple other flowers that are not native plants. Um, I really love sunflowers and zinnias, so I did some sunflowers. Um, I'm obsessed with my red sunflowers that I grow in the summer. I wanted to just celebrate red sunflowers um, and offer something that's a little different. And then I also made, now I love this, but this is going to show you... Um, I was having issues for most, like up until the last couple weeks with my Cricut, cutting my printed stickers not correctly. So I made this beautiful zinnia. The drawing was more purple, but my ink made it come out more pinky. Um, this is actually the my favorite color of zinnia that I don't have pictures of that I could draw. Um, so the one I drew was more purple, but this actually came out like the one that I grow in real life that I love more. Um, so I'm really happy with it. Um, but as you can see, it wasn't really cutting it accurately. Um, I had to off-center the white space behind it in my drawing in Procreate and then upload it to try to get it to cut more to what was um, accurate. Now my Cricut magically just maybe bumped its head and cuts accurately so it's not an issue anymore. Um, but that was super frustrating for the first couple months um, because I'd put everything together and then it wouldn't cut right. And I, I don't want to sell this. This is something I would give to a friend for free, but I would not sell this on my shop because, I mean, if you're paying me money for that and it looks like that, I would just be disappointed. So, you know, whatever. 
But I went ahead and I ordered because my zinnias, you guys have really loved them. So I ordered them through Sticker App. Now they did come out more true to my drawing, more purple, but it is super pretty. I love this one as well. So what I went ahead to do, this is a three inch sticker. I was originally making them in four inches like that other one, um, but now I offer the Sticker App ones that are waterproof and I offer the more pinky one that I make at home that is not completely waterproof. I offer both because they're both so pretty. I mean, like, how could you say no? Right? So I have to offer both just because personally I love them equally and I can't give up on either one. Speaking of flowers, I put my heart, soul, and probably one of my kidneys into drawing some milkweed recently. I'm not super happy with it. I would love to see, you know, in a couple months time that my ability to draw milkweed really improves. But I'm like happy enough with this. A couple of you have ordered it, which has made me feel very validated. So thank you. Uh, shout out to y'all who ordered some of my new precarious drawings. Um, but this is a plant more milkweed with swamp milkweed on holographic paper, no less. Um, but it's, it's tough to see because I'm filming on my iPad, um, the details, but you know, I feel like I could draw it better. I'm just not there yet with my skill and that's okay because I can always go back that's a fun part about making some of these stickers at home is that um, I can keep coming back to something and just like start to finish make it and have it in my hand and then see how I think and feel about it and then make necessary changes and stuff like that so I really like this one but it's more of a work in progress. Since my Cricut magically wanted to start cutting things accurately, I was able to try a concept I've been sitting on for a while. I made a bunch of like my favorite photos and I put like a heart boundary on them, magnolias, and I just went to town. I mean, let's keep going. How many? I don't know, too many. And I made these, they're on my Etsy. But I made these for me. These are these are like memories, some of my favorite photos. And I mean, we live in a day and age where we don't have printed photos very often. So these are really just like for me. They're on my Etsy if you want to order them. I haven't stuck them on anything yet. Um, but these are all some of my favorite memories, favorite places, favorite plants. Just wanted to celebrate that in a sticker because I felt like it. So, you know, I talk about how I've been doing these drawings and procreate for like concept drawings. And if you follow me on Instagram, not too long ago I posted like a mailbox garden concept. And before you even start, I don't want to hear anything about male people and bees because there were enough trolls on my Instagram that went on and on and on about male people being afraid of bees. I hear you, I get it 100%. I'm just here to make art. What you do in your garden is up to you. You know what I mean? What's right for you and your male person, that's up to you. I'm just making drawings and stickers. So before you even try, I don't want to hear it. I'm a soft, sensitive girl, and I'm tired of being yelled at by people for stuff that's like, like, that doesn't even need to be said, you know? So there's my two cents of online trolls. So I wanted, though, to turn that concept drawing into a sticker, but because I had such backlash, I decided to take the mailbox out and put in a pollinator garden sign. So this little guy here, this was just, you know, surrounding a mailbox originally, um, and I have two versions. This one has wild geranium, prairie drop seed, uh, black-eyed Susans, and blue lobelia. The other one has, like, butterfly weed and some other things. Um... I just did the combinations because they're pretty for a sticker and a concept drawing. What works in your garden is going to be up to you. We can talk about it in the comments if you want to. Um, but these were just plants that I mostly did from an artistic perspective. And it turned out really cute. You guys really liked these. Um, so I went ahead and offered both versions on my Etsy store. I really like these as well because it's really kind of advocating for pollinator gardens, to be honest. You know, and that's the whole point behind everything I have here is to pique someone's interest, educate them, and inspire them. And I feel like I might be doing that a little bit I hope I went on a drawing spree the other weekend when I did the milkweeds um, and I also did this concept so something fun that has also been keeping me busy this winter is I work a couple days a week at a tattoo shop I do not tattoo <laughs> I do not tattoo I just answer the phones and barely answer the questions um, but something that a lot of people have been wanting is those like line work wildflower bundles right lavender this that the other and I have been really sitting on the concept of a line work native plant bundle like that's specific and so I made this because I wanted to just fill that need you know I'm not going to get this as a tattoo because I already have a wildflower bundle uh, but I just really I really love this because it's simple but yet specific so we've got gray headed coneflower a milkweed a purple coneflower goldenrod and um, New England asters fun simple love it 
it's one of my favorites. Um, doesn't sell too often. I guess maybe you guys don't love it as much, but I don't care because I make these for me. And if you guys buy them, that's great. And if not, then I just have my favorite stickers. So I put it into a circular sticker. I love these. I love like trying to throw some messages on there. So this one's super simple. Grow native plants. Why? Because you just should. So that one was fun. I really liked doing that. It took me way longer than it should have for such a simple drawing. So speaking of the tattoo shop, okay, I love working there because I'm surrounded by artists and artists that specifically use Procreate to draw. I'm learning from them like every week someone says something that seems super basic but is like news to me and then it just sends me on you know this journey of improved art. So V for instance is an artist and they were telling me that there's an option for symmetry in Procreate and you turn it on and what you draw on one side comes up on the other. So I'm only having to draw for half the time and I'm getting an accurate side to side. So to show you guys kind of my progression with that, I want to show you I started to do butterflies, okay? And so the first butterfly I did was a monarch and I just traced this from a picture from Maribel who runs Black Swallowtail Mama Instagram account. And so I really like this butterfly. It's accurate. Um, it's very accurate to a butterfly you would see in your garden. It's more relaxed wingspan, so a little different from stickers that are, you know, other people offer. Um, but it wasn't too bad. Like, I like it. I'm happy with it. And uh, quite a few of you guys have been buying it. So then I wanted to try, you know, my art got a little better, like a couple weeks went by, if not maybe a month. And so I wanted to make another monarch butterfly, more with that like traditional wingspan um, set up here. And it's hard to see because I'm filming on my iPad, um, the details, um, but you can kind of see a little bit better color fading, um, more details, and just overall better shape. And then today, in a matter of like 20 minutes, because I've learned this symmetry tool, I made a new monarch. I love this one. This one is it. I don't offer it on my Etsy store yet because I have inventory of my other versions that I need to sell through, but this is it. This is my monarch butterfly, and I'm so excited. And I could have never done it if V had never told me there's a freaking symmetry tool. So in the last couple days, let me quickly show you the crazy things I've been busting out since I learned the symmetry thing, right? Okay, so blew them off. What? Who made that? Me? No, good enough. Yes, I did. It's so cute. If you would have told me last summer when I first started Procreate that I would make something like this, I would have told you you're a liar. My favorite sticker I've ever made, I think, truly, I made a rosy maple moth. I made a rosy maple moth and my rosy maple moth is so cute. She's got little eyes. It's so cute. I, I, I love colors. I love everything about rosy maple moths. If I could be a moth, it would be a rosy maple moth. I'm so happy. And, you know, if no one buys it, I don't care because I make these for me. Ultimately, look at all these stickers that I have. And I didn't have to buy them. I just had to make them. I mean, I definitely put money into them. But, you know what I mean? Like, so, if at the end of the day, I'm the only one enjoying these stickers, that's fine. Because, I mean, it's so cute. So, then I wanted to try Swallowtails. Um, I had made a Swallowtail before I learned Symmetry. This one here. And it's good. I like it. I sell it. Um, I offer it as a bundle with my um, Caterpillar sticker as well. But then I learned the symmetry tool and I made a zebra swallowtail. I mean the difference in detail, you can you can see I got better at art, right? You know? So good. And I'm learning how to use different brushes. Then I did where did it go? I did a pipe fine swallowtail. So cute. I learned to shade, I learned blend it, I learned textures, more brushes, and it came out great. I love this one. I put on my Instagram, you know, asking everybody to let me know like what some of your favorite butterflies and moths are. So I got this as a suggestion, and I'm really glad because it's so cute, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I did a red admiral. I really love this one with the little eyes. For ones that I can add little dots to the eyes to make them cuter, I think I'm gonna. It's hard on some of the really tiny ones. So then I got a recommendation for a western species. I love how this sticker turned out. The colors, oh my god. This I finished last night and made today. And like I learned new brushes. So there's brushes for like to make it more furry looking. There's texture brushes to add like um, more speckles. And then there's brushes that you know are airbrushing so it, it fades better. And I like I'm super happy with this. I've never seen this in the wild. Um, but I really liked being given suggestions for species that are not here because it's introducing me to something that like I may never see in person in my whole life. In my whole life, right? Because I live on the East Coast, not the West Coast. So a labor of painstaking love. Um, this took me forever. 
a lot of effort has gone into it and I still don't know if it like really compares to other stickers that you find online, but I did a Cecropia Moth sticker. I love how it turned out, really. I mean, it looks good. Um, you can really see in this one how that symmetry tool really helps me out. You can see how it mirrors exactly on either side. I just don't know if this is like as accurate to what I want a Cecropia Moth to look like, but I like it, I offer it, um, and I also offer it with the Caterpillar sticker. So thank you um, to Instagram for suggesting that I try this one because now I can have another bundle. I like to bundle things because if you are not familiar with Etsy, um, lots of fees for everything. Um, I get charged when I make a listing and I get charged um, a percentage of everything I sell. And then every time I sell something, I get charged again for that listing. So. Um, the more bundles I can do, the better it is for me as a seller, and it just makes it easier for, I think, my customers to check out. I also went ahead and I wanted to try redrawing with that symmetry tool some eastern black swallowtails. So I used some more photos that black swallowtail mama has. Um, this is a male and female swallowtail butterfly. These are not available on my Etsy store yet because I need to sell through the ones that like I already made. Here's that first version. Still a really good sticker, but you can just see that the details got better on these two. I need to edit this one a little, make that darker spot a little lighter so you can see some more of the vein-like details because you can see them on these, on these two. Um, but because I left this one so dark, it's still kind of hard to see. In person you can see it, but on the camera it's really hard. Let's see what else. What else, what else? Oh, so since it's April is Native Plant Month, um, I made a bunch of native plant month stickers to go along with those decals with every order so if you order throughout april you might get one of these in with your order for free i just like you know i like to give i like to be fun i like to celebrate things you know and um my etsy store is definitely helping me um financially right and I by no means am in a place where I want to give stuff for free left and right. Um, but I think running a promo code on my Etsy to celebrate Native Plant Month is a great way to celebrate it um, and bring attention to it and really get more of my products into the hands of people who will love them. Um, because even though, like, yeah, I love to make money off of these, I still feel better just knowing that, like, my creations are finding, like, a happy home, you know, and might be inspiring and educating other people, like, along the way. Um, a couple other things that I've made just before I wrap up the video here. I wanted to make a native plant nerd sticker because my native plant nerd decal has been so popular. Um, so I went ahead and I made this guy. I really like it. Um, and then I turned it into a holographic option as well. Super cute. We really like that. And then I did pretty much the same with a grow native plant sticker. These have not really been selling. You guys don't really seem to like them. Um, I guess, you know, maybe you like the decal more, and that's okay. Um, I had figured people would like this a little bit more than they do, um, but that's okay. You know, I end up with cool stickers that I like, and if you guys come across them and like them too, even better. But I'm so happy, and I won't cry myself to sleep. Something else that I made recently, I did a blue winged wasp. I'm really happy with this. Um, I've been wanting to do wasp stickers for a while because just like, you know, drawing attention to native bees, I feel like our native wasps need some help. And creating cute, fun stickers that celebrate them might really help change the perspective towards wasps. Um, if you are familiar with Heather Holm, Heather Holm is a great advocate for native wasps, and she created that beautiful book on native wasps. And honestly, like, I have been coming around to native wasps for a while, but Heather Holm and the material she puts together and listening to her on podcasts like really helped expedite me growing a love for wasps and being able to also advocate for them so making a little sticker kind of again like with the tomato hornworm something that's usually viewed as a pest something that's usually viewed as something scary and awful turning it into a sticker makes it seem like something desirable and it really challenges the perspective people have on the species itself. I could keep going. I have more stickers. I'm like looking around and there are there are more that I won't because I'm sure you guys are overwhelmed by the amount of things that I have because I know I am. Um, yeah, <laughs> it has been fun. Um, I feel like it gave my brain something enriching to do all winter long. Um, it's given me something that I really feel like celebrates my love for these. Um, and it has also provided me with an extra stream of income, which no one can complain um, about that. So if you are interested in my Etsy shop and you haven't checked it out yet, I'll link it below. I'll give the promo code. Um, 
and all that sorts of good stuff. So I really loved it. If you've never tried Procreate and you want to try drawing, I feel like it's a really great way to learn and be assisted in creating art and drawing because I can't make any of this on paper but I can do it on my iPad and it's such a game changer and if you've never challenged yourself to try something new I totally recommend it because it's just wholeheartedly fun and amazing um, so yeah I'm so excited you guys joined me for this video and came along on my journey um, with all my stickers and for those of you following along on Instagram and have been supporting me on Instagram and buying from my Etsy store I appreciate it more than you know you know, Stella had to have another surgery this year. She had a torn ACL. And you guys buying stuff from my Etsy shop helped me pay for parts of that surgery. And I am just, there's no real words to express the gratitude, especially during a time where everybody is financially struggling. Like, nobody's probably really making the same amount of money that they made, you know, before the Panera. So, um, I just don't, like, I don't expect people to buy from me, and I'm just so happy that, like, you do, because it means that you feel like I'm worth investing in, and it makes me just feel really validated, and um, it makes me feel like I'm not alone in my love for all of these things. So, thank you so much for following me along on social media and supporting me through my Etsy store. I am so excited to continue to make fun stuff. And on Instagram, if you ever want to, like, give me an idea for something you want to see me draw, uh, if you want to see a certain species or something, let me know. I can't promise that I can draw it, but I sure as heck will try. So thank you guys so much. I'm excited to go into the growing season with you all and start showing you what's waking up in my containers and all that fun stuff. So until then, happy Native Plant Month and happy gardening.